any wisdom tradition will creatively articulate the same idea. So one of the things about a dream, it's, it's a reflection, it's a projection of the mind. And when we're in a dream, and I'm talking at night, and we don't have the recognition of the nature of our situation, we actually react to the forms of the dream as if they're separate from ourselves, as if they objectively exist. The soul demands that we experience our own divinity and find a way to express it in service to the world. It's like we're a kitten looking in a mirror, seeing her reflection, which is just her own energy, but then reacting to the reflection as if it's something other than ourselves. So then it becomes an infinitely self-perpetuating feedback loop where we actually are imprisoning ourselves by the creative power of our own mind. If we think this world is independent and objective, it will then, in no time whatsoever, reflect back the very point of view that we're entertaining. So then it will give us all the evidence that we need to support our perspective, oh, that it is objective, which then we become even more entrenched in that viewpoint. So we then even more see the world as separate and objective, and the more we see it that way, the more it proves to us that it really is that way in a feedback loop, which is generated by our own mind. One way is to see this being a dream, to see the dream like nature. Just like when you have a dream at night and you wake up and you can contemplate the dream, oh, what is the meaning, what is the symbolism, what parts of myself are being embodied in all the different dream characters. Same thing with our waking life. We can view our waking life as if it's a dream. If this is a dream and we're dream characters in each other's dreams, so I'm a dream character in your dream, you're a dream character in my dream, whatever's happening, moment by moment, both of us, all seven billion of us, are actually dreaming up into materialization, this universe, whatever is unfolding, the implication of that is that we're not separate. We're interconnected, we're interdependent. So first seeing the dreamlike nature, second seeing through the, the separate self. In physics, they talk about the actual field, the non-local field. And the non-local field, it's all pervasive and it transcends third dimensional space and time, so it doesn't play by the typical laws or rules of space and time. And in physics, you know, this idea of there being a field and that it's non-local is one of the major breakthroughs of the last century. There's no separation in the universe that each of the seemingly separate parts are actually not separate. They're actually interconnected and interdependent, and that includes all of us. I mean, we can interpret just like a dream. Oh, every aspect, every dream character is an aspect of yourself. What does the symbolism mean? It speaks because the language of dreams are symbols. Just like you would work on a night dream, you could do that during your waking life. And one good practice to do even before you go to bed, think about the day you just had and think about particular interesting experiences. And then what if that were a dream? How would you interpret that? What is that showing you about yourself? And then you could extend that, you know, not just for that one day, but for that week or month or your, your whole lifetime until you assume the position of, oh, you're, it's just like you're contemplating a dream that you've had that you've now woken up out of. And that becomes a practice to the point where you begin to develop that awareness in the moment. So as things are happening around you, you're like in the world and you're, you know, interacting in what, with whatever's happening, but you also have that awareness of, wow, you know, this is a dream, this is a reflection, which is what a dream is. It's reflecting something inside of us. Pre-quantum physics, the classical physics, was actually thinking there was an objective world out there that they were studying. And quantum physics is saying, no, 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 that's empirically proven. There's not even the slightest shred of a doubt. There's no such thing as an objective world that we as observers are part of the world we're observing and the very act of observing actually invokes the world that we're observing. The observer and the observed are inseparable. It's one quantum system with no separation. Now what I just described, that's a dream because think about what a dream is. It's a projection of your mind. 
it's actually the mind reflected back through the dreamscape. Another way of saying that is that our inner process is actually expressing itself through the channel of the seemingly outer dream. And if we don't recognize that, we become entranced by the form, so the dream thinking it's other. But if we have that recognition, oh, then we realize what we're experiencing is just a reflection of ourselves. So just imagine that we're in a dream, right? Imagine we're in a dream right now. And if I hold a viewpoint, whatever the viewpoint is, the dream, which is not separate from my own mind, in no time whatsoever is going to shapeshift and reflect back the truth of my viewpoint. Because what is the dream but my own viewpoint just reflected back? Now, if I'm holding a viewpoint and the dream is doing that, now I have all the evidence at least in my thinking, to confirm, oh, well, my viewpoint is objectively true. So that's even going to make me more entrenched in thinking that I'm holding the correct viewpoint. And as soon as I become even more fixed in my viewpoint, the dream is just going to offer all the evidence ad infinitum that my perspective is true. And take a look at what's happened. I've actually cast a spell on myself via the power of my own dreaming, my own genius to call forth reality is boomeranging and I've become enchanted by my own power of co-creating reality. So that's like the opposite of being awake. But when you see through that process, then all of a sudden you realize, oh wow, this is a malleable universe. This is what quantum physics is pointing at. This universe is malleable. It's plastic. It's, it's not written in stone inside of my own psyche there's nothing out there right now imagine you know one other dream character who you connect with who's also having that realization or imagine 10 or 100 and you get together and you contemplate what you're realizing i.e oh my god this universe that we're in this is just the materialization of our consciousness this is like a shared collective dream now what i'm pointing at is that at a certain critical number when you get a sufficient number of those dream characters who are awakening they can it's what i call the the sacred power of dreaming they, which is the part of us that dreams the dream into materialization you can actually configure and conspire with each other conspiring to co-inspire where you put that sacred power of dreaming together in a way where you can change the dream you're having and that's evolution Now, what I was just describing is in a night dream, but that's the nature of our situation in, in the waking dream. That's what all of this is about. That's what this waking universe is continually reflecting moment by moment for us to wake up to. Art is an illusion that can convey the truth. In the same way, the entire world of form is a magical illusion, an exhibition of transcendental artistry pointing to a greater truth. God's unrepresentable primordial state of clarity, awareness, and bliss underlies all manifest realms and can be recovered, remembered, re-seen here and now.